this is Anthony. Hello. Hi, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. This is uh this is Eric speaking. Hey Eric, how are you? Hey, doing well. I have uh one of my colleagues here with me as well, Andrew. Uh and then there may be one one more joining us here here shortly as well. Uh appreciate you uh you taking the time to hop on the phone here. Yeah, you bet. Where uh where are you guys located? We are on the west coast. So rainy oh, rainy day out here, unfortunately. Um yep. so look, hey, uh, Eric Hey Eric, uh, you've got John on the phone as well. Hey John. So look, Anthony, I appreciate you, you taking the time to hop on the phone here. Maybe if I just gave you a, a you know a few quick seconds here on you know where we're coming to the call from to kind of set the stage, um, and then would love to jump into um, you know the global compliance trade software uh, space with you, kind of you know higher level market trends, what you're seeing in the space, uh, and then maybe talk through some specific vendors uh, as well if, if that works okay for you. Sounds good. So, so this is Eric speaking. You know, my, my colleagues and I here work for an investment firm focused exclusively on investing in software companies, and the global trade management software space is a uh, space that we've been spending a lot of time in recently and trying to better understand. Um, and so, you know, potentially evaluating potential investment in the space, and as as part of that process, we reach out to folks like yourself, um, you know, to better understand the space and and you know some of the vendors. Uh, as well, uh, and you know, understand you have some experience with you know Descartes, Amber Road, uh, E Customs, Blue Jay, uh, and so we'd love to to sort of you know dive into those. Um, but maybe we'll you know pause there if you have any questions or you know otherwise can can go ahead and get kicked off here. Uh, you know, no questions from my end. Maybe it might be helpful for you guys uh, if I do a, a one minute overview, kind of bio. That way, uh, some of the names of these companies and maybe the, the history will help uh, set the tone a little bit as to how we got the market as it is today. That, that'd be helpful, Anthony. And uh, this, this is Andrew speaking. It'd also be helpful. Just, you know, tell us about we've got your role and the little blurb that CLG gave us, but if you can give us more on kind of what you did at Amber Road while you were there and why you ultimately left, um, that would be helpful as well. Yeah. Uh, so so real quick, I'll do the one-minute version, but uh, I've been in global trade for 25 years. Uh, I started at the U.S. Department of Commerce uh, as a trade specialist. Um, commerce is important uh, because it's one of the agencies that has a lot of the regulatory controls, uh, specifically with U.S. exports. Um, I left in commerce in the late 90s uh, to do a startup. This is during the dot-com days, but uh, to focus on a solution uh, called land at cost. That's something that's probably worth noting because that's a big piece of the import side of the global compliance space. Land of cost means being able to calculate the duty taxes and fees. And so what we built, uh, the company was from 2.com. Uh, we raised money from uh, SoftBank and Steinmet Ventures and a few others. Uh, but it was to focus on the e-commerce market and providing a land at cost so that folks could have full visibility into what the real price of an item was if it was going from, say, Sao Paulo, or excuse me, U.S. to Sao Paulo. Uh, two years there, uh, built a great solution, but a lot of us were government people, not probably the best business people. Uh, big learning curve there, uh, and that became an asset pickup. The current owners, I believe, of that solution are now in for. Um, and so then I went to, uh, met up with a bunch of folks that were in the space. A lot of the GTM market was point solutions, so whether it was land at cost in our case or export management systems, there's a lot of those that were out there uh, and others. Uh, I had, had the, uh, you know, the, the, basically the, the pleasure of meeting a lot of the, the executives at, at these other companies, and so I joined Vastera. Vastera is an important one because that's the first one that went public in the space, um, and we actually named the space. So I was an executive that ran the global content organization at Vastera. Uh, you know, without getting into all of the weeds of it, if you think of the software um, in the global regulatory software or GTM space, you have the code, 